Welcome back to What Are Nibs with General Disturbance. This is an M44, the Tier 6 American SPG. This one's located on the north spawn of Cliff and it's under the command of Little Wee. Now it's got 155mm howitzer, capable of 550 alpha and a fairly quick reload between 16 to 17 seconds. And it's mounted on a swivel mount, which means it's got a very wide arc of fire. Game started. Well, Little Wee is heading off to the west and presumably he's going to go into the dip. A lot of RT players tend to go there because it's um, a it's fairly good place to fire at the enemy without being seen. Yep, goes over the cliff. Try not to knock any trees down in the way and well, he's ready I think. Just needs to get behind these bushes and he can start shooting. Okay, that seems nice. Just backing up a bit. Don't want to knock that ball down if you can help it because that would give your position away. And he's now aiming at the enemy and he's found a T-67 who's just been stunned and I think he's been hit by our gorilla. Okay. And there's a T-1 heavy but he's got behind that cliff base. Ah, and that's true. The M42 hasn't. And our tanks have managed to get up fairly close to that Rudy just the other side of the rock face, but if we fire at the moment, there's a good chance we might hit him, but we might be able to get a shot into that T1. Rounds out. Direct hit! And he pulls forward just a little, just in case the enemy wants to try a counter battery on him. That way, the shell will go behind him and he'll be safe. And the strip's down. The T1 is very badly damaged. He's only got 15 hit points left. He's a one shot or a splash kill. Now there's a T-34 on the next level up. Um, he's just around the other side of that rock, so we can't get at him, but we can get at this Churchill 7. And he's decided to stop driving halfway up. And, oh, got hit for it. 247 hit points. Little Wee pulls back just far enough so that uh, if anybody was going to try and counter-battery him, they'd miss again. Okay. Lining up a shot on that Churchill 7. Rounds out. Oh, that must have been close. Very close. And he's relocated again. Well, now we've got a KV-1. And there's the Churchill 7. And it has lost quite a lot of hit points. He's going to try for another shot, I think. Working out where it's headed. Rounds out. Round should meet him. It does! Direct hit! He's badly damaged now. He won't last long. Shift 74 has gone down. That Fury is a little more difficult actually because he's actually behind those uh, arches and that's a difficult shot but he does get some splash there. Pulls back. The skins by the way they came from Jazzy and Sir Rusty and we're very grateful for them because they are absolutely beautiful. Charcoal black with our logo on the side. Rounds out on the Fury. Unfortunately, it looked to be a bit short, but the round actually did hit the target. It looked as if the round was going to be short. It went long and right in. Okay, well, he's going for the Fury again. He's loaded and rounds out on the Fury. And he's killed him! Direct hit! And that's his first kill. Okay, that KB-1 has come out from behind his rock. Okay, we're loaded, but... Oh, the AMX CLC is right up on top of the hill next to the lighthouse, but we can't see him at the moment, so probably not worth bothering for the moment. The KV-1's down. The Churchill 7 is hiding behind that house. I'm not sure we can get a splash kill, but we could try. If he backs up or goes to one side... Well, somebody tried to hit the house, and I think that may have been the gorilla. We're firing at the corner just in case we can splash kill him. No, it hits the house. And that T-3485 has not come out from behind that rock, but he just killed our Super Jumbo, who made the mistake of actually going over to the other side into the south area. And uh, our Hellcat's going to go around and see if he can deal with that T-3485. He might be able to find him and catch him unawares. Well, he's found him. 
Let's hope he can deal with him. Well, he did. And that T-34 is out of the game. But the M44 and the enemy team just took out our Hellcat. So he must have seen what was coming and lined up a shot on him. Ah, we're looking for a counter-battery now. And the ideal way to do that is actually from above, from the God's view. Um, okay, now he's looking up on the heights. Now, there usually is a TD somewhere up here sitting behind that bush. Rounds out. No, it went to one side. That was unfortunate. Okay, he's extending his aim again. There is a way to actually do that where you can look at the area you want to see straight away without having to scroll it out using your mouse. And the way to do that is to click on the minimap with your cursor. So hold down the control key and then move the cursor over to the minimap and click on the place you want to see and right click on your mouse and that'll take you to, to see the spot you want to see straight away. Okay, AMX CLC just got splashed. 17 hit points. He's stunned. But the Panzer 4H has got very low hit points. And if that ELC has got the 19mm gun, the Panzer 4H will be gone in one shot. I have the feeling it has got the 90mm. Rounds out on the AMX, but he pulled forward just in time. Now the Panzer 4H is being sneaky. He's going around the corner. Ah, enemy Artie's aware of what he's up to and placed around there, around there, hoping to catch him. In fact, both enemy Artie's fired at that spot. Now, we're one down on the enemy. We don't know what's behind the other side of the hill, but uh, the Panzer 4H is now up on top. And the AMX CLC is not there. And that's because he's being killed. <laughs> I uh, he didn't miss the killing. Yep, he was wiped out. And there's no sign that any enemy tank is uh, up on those um, tank destroyer um, heights. That's normally where the tank destroyers go. And they do have a T-67 on their team, a Stug 3G and an M10 RBFM. So I would... I would have thought that one of them, uh, or Hellcat for that matter, would, would have thought that one of them was up there. Now we've got nobody directly in front of us except for that SU-85. And we're relying on him to spot any enemy that's coming through the Western Pass. And the other thing that we can do as RT is look for any form of destruction. Any building, any walls going down, any buildings being destroyed, any pots or uh, carts or fences being trampled over. And it's a good clear sign that somebody is headed this way. Okay, well there's one of the enemy, the tank destroyed T-67, and he just got a kill on our M40, uh, on our, um, or did he? No, actually a Stug 3G got our T-1 heavy. Oh no, that was our Stug 3G. The T-67 was taken out by our Achilles. Just wondering what that T-67 hit, or did he just spot for his team? He's showing that he got two kills before he was killed. There's the M10. And he's exchanging fire with the Achilles. Both basically the same vehicle, but the Achilles has got the 17-pounder and the M10's only got a 76. And the M10 just got hit by our gorilla. He's stunned. Now, can we put a round in there? Hopefully he's still there. We're lined up, just in case the Achilles spots him. And the moment he does, we'll put a round in. There he is. Okay, line it up. Rounds out. Oh, we missed. But the Achilles has gone in, and he got hit by the enemy RT there. And, oh, he decided to go over the edge, and in doing so, he's lost some hit points. We can't hit the M10 easily from here, but we're going to have a try. Round out. And the M10 is down. The Achilles got him. But the enemy Stug 3G took out our Panzer 4H right up on top of the hill. I have a suspicion that Stug 3G is on that uh, tank destroyer spotting place in uh, K K5. I reckon that's where he is. I think the Achilles wants the Stug 3G to have a quick look over the edge of the cliff. 
see what it can see. If we get sight of any enemy vehicles, it'd be a good idea to get a shell into them quickly. The only problem is they do have a Hellcat and a Stug 3G still alive, and both their arties, an M44 and a Fifi. The Grillers deciding to go through the Western Pass as well. It may be a good idea to move towards the cap, but I still suspect that Stug 3G is up at K5. If we do move towards the cap and the enemy spots us, he'll get easy shots on us as we move towards the cap, their cap. It's only 4 minutes 35 seconds left on the cap now, on the uh, clock. We need to move. Uh, what is the Hercules doing? Uh, Stokes decided to push down the Western Pass on the far west side of it. If there is an enemy tank, he'll get spotted first. But we may not get sign of where he is. And the Achilles, well, he's going up high. But of course, if the enemy and... Okay, right, the Stug 3G is pinging where he thinks... Our Stug is pinging where he thinks the enemy is. And it is K5, he thinks. Okay, so we need to put a couple of rounds into here. Okay, there. Should do fine. And the enemy Fifi's been spotted, so we can take him out straight away. Dialing in. Rounds out. Oh, 68 of splash, but he did take a shot. And he's one shot now. Yep, he's gone. Okay, now we need to get around up here to kill the RT. Uh, kill the uh, tank destroyers. Okay, fire into that bush. Got plenty of rounds to spare. No sign yet. He's firing another one in. Got plenty of ammo. He doesn't know which way we're coming from, but he might have seen the Achilles by now. And um, Although the Achilles hasn't said his sixth sense has gone off. Oh, there's the Hellcat. Okay, we spotted him now. Dialing in and... Rounds out. This should kill. Well, he didn't kill, but it did do a lot of damage. And that's the splash from the Stug. Was it the Stug who got him? It's the Stug 3G who got him, not the Griller. Okay, we're reloaded. There's only two enemies remaining. There's Stug 3G and their M44. Our Stug 3G is near their cap. And there's the two minute warning. The M44 is probably in those bushes. He is. There he is. He's making a run at our Stug. Now line up a shot on him and kill shot. Direct impact. 122 hit points. And we now know where that Stug is. He's actually in our cap. And our Gorilla's turning around to engage. I'm not sure that's the wise decision. Our Stug's coming back, our Achilles is coming back. But, um, yeah, our Gorilla was moving closer to get a shot at him. Now, from this angle, it's a bit difficult to get shots from certain directions because we've got buildings in the way. There are a few buildings right in front of us. But he's firing a few speculative rounds in, just in case he was hiding behind the camp. The Gorilla's going to go and have a quick look. The Achilles is getting close. There he is. He's pulling back. He knows he's been spotted and rounds out. Direct hit. 187. It won't take the Achilles long to kill him. The Stug thinks he's got an easy kill on the Gorilla. He will get a bit of a shock when he gets fired on by the Achilles and the Stug 3G. And he's gone over the edge and now he's dead. The Stug 3G on our team got him. Game over. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats. 
And it's a second class tanker for Little Wee in the M44. He got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits, screen capacitations or module damage. In fact, he got 11 in that game. But he did also, also managed to get the high caliber. He did the most damage in the game. And he also got a confederate, despite the fact that he actually killed two of the enemy tanks. He definitely hit at least six enemy tanks that were subsequently taken out by other teammates. And the total win eight for that game was 5,013. He got the highest damage, 2,078 hit points of damage in that game. Uh, the next highest scorer was, in actual fact, the Achilles with 1, 2, 4, 3. And after that was the um, um, Churchill with 1, 2, 3, 0. And the highest scorer on the enemy team was their Stug 3G, 1,199. When it came to kills, it was the Achilles and the Stug 3G who did the best, along with the M44 on the enemy team. Both got three, all got three kills apiece, and Little Wee got two. And when it came to base XP, well, that goes to the Achilles with 843, the M44 with 799, and the Churchill 1 with 794. He fired 21 rounds in that game, got 8 direct hits and 1 penetration. Not sure which one he actually got the penetration on. Let's have a look. Um, no, not that one. No, no. Ah, there it is. It was the penetration on the Hellcat. He actually did pen with that round, but it wasn't enough to wipe him out. He got 524 hit points, which must have been a low roll, because this does 550 alpha. Ah, so that explains it. Okay, that's why it was still alive. If we go to the detail again, 2,078 hit points, of which um, uh, all of it was at more than 300 meters. Oh, I forgot to mention 12 splashes as well. Um, eight enemy vehicles damaged, two destroyed, 390 hit points of stun assist off 10 stuns and 52 defense points when he hit that uh, Stug 3G in the cap. On a premium count, he earned 39,945 credits, got 50,000 credits for completing the Veni Vidi Vici, and that gave him 89,945 credits overall. And after repair and ammunition resupply, he took away 79,334 credits. He picked up two bonds, one for getting the Confederate and one for the High Calibre, and 1,198 XP times four for the first victory, took away 4,794 experience points altogether. So a very good battle there for Little Wee. It's a pity it wasn't more than a second-class tanker uh, after getting those two medals as well, but uh, the rest of his teammates were actually fairly good because they managed to get a fair amount of damage which is uh, not normally what you'd expect <laughs> but um yeah you normally expect the arty to do quite well and be in the top three but on this occasion yep there were several other tanks or the achilles and the churchill who were actually quite good as well so if you enjoyed that replay please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel we get great replays all the time and it would be a real shame if you missed out on one of those super unicum ones thanks for watching